Good morning, everyone. Glad you found us for our online worship. We appreciate you tuning in. Hopefully this doesn't find you sick, but if you are out of town and taking advantage of watching this, hey, we love to hear that too. So make sure that you uh, take a moment to sign in, include all of those that are attending. Remember, we track that attendance, uh, so we appreciate you uh, tuning in. So today's a special Sunday too, because we are going to dedicate our altar candles. Uh, so these altar candles uh, were dedicated in memory of Lois Patterson. So we used her memorial money uh, to uh, bring those uh, in our sanctuary to beautify that because as everybody that knew uh, Lois remembers that she was always very involved in our altar care. So uh, very cool that we have these blessings to add to our beautiful sanctuary. So we get going. We make our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So beloved in the Lord, Moses was commanded by the Lord to receive gifts from the people for the beautification of the sanctuary. Everyone whose heart stirred and whose spirit was moved brought a contribution to the Lord to be used in the Lord's house in all its services. Since the Lord has taught us in his holy word that everything is sanctified by the word of God and prayer, it is fitting that we bless and sanctify these altar candles to be a blessed use for, to be blessed for use in God's holy house. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O God, you have directed us to bring offerings to your glory. We implore you to bless these altar candles. Grant that they may reflect your love for you, benefit for your church, and bring joy to those who use them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And the Lord Almighty, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Bless these altar candles and those who use them. Amen. Thy strong word did cleave the darkness, at thy speaking it was done. Oh, uh -huh. 
continue by praying Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. We read responsibly sections of Psalm 119. My soul longs for your salvation, I hope in your word. My eyes long for your promise, I ask, when will you comfort me? For I have become like a wineskin in the smoke, yet I have not forgotten your statutes. How long must your servant endure? When will you judge those who persecute me? The insolent have dug pitfalls for me. They do not live according to your law. All your commandments are sure. They persecute me with falsehoods. Help me. They have almost made an end of me on earth, but I have not forsaken your precepts. In your steadfast love give me life, that I may keep the testimonies of your mouth. We continue with our confession and forgiveness. Let us confess our sins to God, our merciful Father. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Maker of all things, Judge of all people, we admit and confess our sinfulness. We have turned away from each other in our thinking, speaking, and doing. We have done the evil you forbid and have not done the good you demand. We repent and are truly sorry for these our sins. Have mercy on us, kind Father, because of the obedience of our brother, Jesus Christ, your Son. Forgive us all that is past, and with the power of the Holy Spirit, move us to serve you faithfully. Set our feet upon a new path of life, and build your kingdom here among us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And hear the good news of our loving Heavenly Father, for he indeed has had mercy upon us, and has sent his Son Jesus to die for us. So in the stead and by the command of my Savior Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia.
The Old Testament reading for the 10th Sunday after Pentecost is from Jeremiah chapter 23. Thus says the Lord of hosts, do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you, filling you with vain hopes. They speak visions of their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. They say continually to those who despise the word of the Lord, it shall be well with you. And to everyone who stubbornly follows his own heart, they say, no disaster shall come upon you. For who among them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see and to hear his word? Who, or who has paid attention to his word and listened? Behold, the storm of the Lord. Wrath has gone forth a whirling tempest. It will burst upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and accomplished the intents of his heart. In the latter days, you will understand it clearly. I did not send the prophets, yet they ran. I did not speak to them, yet they prophesied. But if they stood in my counsel, then they would have proclaimed my words to my people, and they would have turned from their evil way and from, their, and from the evil of their deeds. I am... Am I a God at hand, declares the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said, who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall there, shall there be lies in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart, who think to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell to one another, even as their fathers forgot my name for Baal? Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let him who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, declares the Lord, is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I came to cast fire on the earth, and would it that it were already kindled. I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how great is my distress until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. For from now on, in one house, there will be five divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you say at once, a shower is coming. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorch, scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hi, boys and girls. It's Deaconess Kim with the children's message for you today. 
Now, do you know the story of the Exodus? That's one of the biggest stories in the Old Testament. God's people were slaves in Egypt and God rescued them. God used his mighty power to send plagues on Egypt and finally Pharaoh let them go. But do you know what? God's people were still in trouble. You see, after they left Egypt, Pharaoh changed his mind. He got in his chariot with all of his soldiers and started chasing God's people to bring them back to Egypt. God's people ended up trapped with Pharaoh's army on one side and the Red Sea on the other side. And sometimes we can feel trapped too. It might be because something bad has happened to us, or it might be because we've done something that we know is wrong that we shouldn't do. But either way, we feel trapped and we don't know what to do. Has that ever happened to you? Now the good news for Moses and God's people is that God was still with them. Do you know how God saved his people at the Red Sea? He said, what Red Sea? God made all the water in the Red Sea pile up and made a dry path appear right through the middle of the water. Even though they thought they were trapped, God made a path for his people and led them to safety. And there's good news for us too, right? We were trapped by sin, but God made a path for us too. God sent Jesus who died on the cross and rose up alive again. Jesus is our path to safety. When we believe in Jesus, we aren't trapped by sin anymore. We are free to follow God. Now, what can you do this week to remember that? You could draw a picture of God's people crossing the Red Sea, or you could say a prayer to thank God for sending Jesus and saving you from being trapped. Or maybe you have another idea. Run with that because Jesus makes you free. Will you pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you so much for loving me. When I was trapped by sin, you saved me. Thank you. Help me follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. To you, online viewers, chosen by our Heavenly Father for His good purposes in this life, empowered by the Holy Spirit for obedience to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be to you. So yeah, we've got a funny uh, title today for sure as for our sermon, but as the temperature heats back up in Kansas City, God's lectionary timing is a good one because Jesus is the one that's bringing the heat. So who is the target for our flame-throwing Jesus? Well, of course, it's the hypocrites. Uh-oh. I sure hope Jesus isn't aiming at me. Now, don't look around. Don't look to your left or your right. <laughs> Remember, when we started this three weeks ago, we recognized that, yes, we too are hypocrites, and hypocrites need Jesus. So, as we get back at this, we remember in the beginning of chapter 12, Jesus was aiming at the Pharisees. He was bringing the heat to the Pharisees, calling them hypocrite, hypocrites, because they were pretending to be one thing, leaders of God's people, but yet their behavior and their attitude was something completely different. Hypocrites have many hats, all 
need to be burned with fire. So that's how St. Luke says it's going down in chapter 3. If you remember in chapter 3, this is where we're introduced to John the baptizer, right? And he was preaching in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. The crowds that came out to John were wanting to hear what he was preaching, and he gave them this warning. He gave them this welcome. You brood of vipers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Not exactly the Dale Carnegie, how to win friends and influence people for sure. But John the Baptist, the forerunner of Jesus, is just telling it how it is. Dealing with hypocrisy. They claim to be children of Abraham, but their actions were not in line with faithful Abraham. Remember, Abraham was willing to do whatever it took. He followed God's word to the T, even willing to sacrifice his son Isaac on that altar. Abraham was faithful to God's word. But the followers of Abraham were following in name only. They wanted to claim that they were children of Abraham, but their behavior was not in line. And so St. John is pointing that out. And he tells them, if you are indeed children of Abraham, then do this. Bear fruits in keeping with repentance. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. John's message, the same as Jesus' message, the one bringing the fire. And we don't always like to hear these words, do we? Because these words come to you and to me. We're being hypocritical when we claim the name Christ, but we are not following Jesus, right? That repentance, that repentance which reflects us bearing good fruit for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. See, this is what God's Word does to us. When, when Jesus first was coming, right? His initial calling of the disciples. He had his inner three, Peter, James, and John. And then it expanded to the twelve, the twelve disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we also saw it expand to the 72, the 72 that went out proclaiming God's Word, calling those to repentance, bringing Jesus fire. And see, the same is for you and for me even today. God's word tenderly invites us, but it is still met the same way today. Some feel the fire of God's word, others run from its purifying power. Some believe, others doubt, and others are even outright hostile to God's teaching, to the Lord's fire. Jesus says he didn't come to bring peace at this time. Absolutely, Jesus will come and usher in a new era of peace, and we look forward to that day. But when Jesus came that first time, he was bringing fire. It's not what Jesus wants, but he knows that his word will cause that kind of division, because that's what God's word sometimes does, especially when you look around our culture. Yeah, speaking of division, my cousin's wife posted this. Remember, this is not a Christian country, but a nation where you are free to be a Christian or Muslim or Hindu or atheist or not. I'm not sure she was trying to build peace on earth with this post, laugh out loud, although maybe she feels as if that that's what she was trying to accomplish. I'm sure this makes a few of you very angry, but others of you might see this statement as truth. Freedom does afford us much in this country, like the ability to follow Jesus, that is to truly follow Jesus. But what does that really mean? Remember, those coming to John the baptizer were claiming to follow Jesus. Well, they were claiming to be sons of Abraham, which were the same thing, followers of God. But John challenged their claims. Today it is no different. We have folks that claim to follow Jesus Christ or claim the name Christ, but don't even go to church. 
or they're not affiliated with a Bible study or even read the Word of God. We have studies in Barna that can prove that statement is absolutely true. Now I know they don't want to be seen as a Jesus freak, right? You don't want to face persecution. You might lose your job. Certainly, you could lose some friends, even some friends that claim the name Christian. We do have some freedoms in this country for sure. And for that, we can be thankful that we're not being persecuted for our religion, our faith, or put under bans. However, this is really theologically problematic for Lutherans, right? That statement that was being made, the freedom to choose as if we are a Christian or not a Christian. I mean, think about it in that way. Perhaps John the Baptist would have some words for us here too. A Christian isn't like owning a Blockbuster card. (laughs) We have a Jesus membership. No, it's more like being drafted into the army. You report for duty. I'll let you compare. Read this with me. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him, but the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all of my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and to all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. I hope you see the difference because Jesus' call is a call to action. Jesus' call is to those that are bringing the fire. Not just simply claiming the name of Jesus, but actually, truly following Jesus. All those that do not are simply hypocrites. Good thing for us though, right? (laughs) That Jesus loves hypocrites. Hypocrites like you and me, because we all fall short of following our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we do sin daily against Him and His church. And we will continue to struggle in our walk with our Lord and in being faithful, being faithful to His kingdom work as He calls us to. You see, that's why we need the fire. That's why we should like it hot. We need fire. We need Jesus fire, and we get it in His Word, where we are reminded that we are forgiven. We get it as we receive His body and blood at this altar to strengthen us for our faith and our following of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. See, this hasn't changed from the time of Abraham to the time of today. Even Malachi has these words for us, Behold, I send my messenger, for he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soul. He will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver, and they will bring offerings in righteousness to the Lord. In Malachi's day, it's just like today. People grew weary, weary because of the world. And Malachi went after God's people at that time, bringing the fire to them by by criticizing them for not bringing in the tithes to God's house so that God's work could be done. Feeling like it's vain to serve the Lord because it's absolutely important for us to be serving God. And then when they were looking at their neighbors and seeing everyone else is prospering, why not me? We'll see That's when we need to check ourselves because we are in the world, but we are not worldly. We've got to be very careful when it comes to these 
things. And when we see worldly stuff in our own life, it is time to light the fire and burn it away because we are not laying up treasures for this life. We are laying up treasures for the life to come. Purity is worked in you and me by the power of the Holy Spirit refined in Jesus. And when we go forth together as God's people in the fire of Jesus, look out. Want to know something that's pretty cool? Remember Jesus told his disciples to wait for the pouring out of the Holy Spirit. And so when they were gathered on that Pentecost day, the tongues of fire were distributed on God's people. That word distributed is the same exact word as the word division in St. Luke's gospel in this chapter, or this verse 52. You see, in Luke's gospel, fire is an expression of God's activity, God's activity in you and me. Now, it doesn't mean causing divisions like going around and picking fights and causing trouble in the name of Jesus. Of course not. But remember when John and James wanted to bring down fire to destroy the Samaritans? Jesus rebuked them and reminded them, yes, we are about fire, but our fire is different. You see, we are bringing gospel hope. We are gospel people empowered with this forgiveness ministry. We speak words of hope, of love, of joy, and we do acts of mercy. Like our golf tournament that's supporting the Liberty Women's Clinic where they bring hope to women in a hopeless place. Like our work day. <laughs> if you've noticed, uh, if you're signing up on those things, uh, we are filling ourselves with Jesus in worship on that day, and then we are showing his love to others with beds and birthday cakes. Hey, talk about acts of mercy. We keep our families focused on the fire of God's word in our family-friendly partners network, right? Our growing faithful families where we encourage family devotions and bedtime prayers and scripture readings with our family. Because we know that Satan is going to cut, not cut us any slack and that he is going to keep continuing to come after us. So we work out our salvation with fear and trembling in the fire of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Engaging in our discipleship program, right? Being equipped to share the hope that we have in Jesus with others. Because these are our tools to bring that heat against Satan. One day it's going to be kindled when Jesus comes again. But until that time, Team Jesus, keep throwing the fire. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses our human understanding. Guard your hearts and keep your minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. We continue our worship by returning to our Lord a portion of the gifts he has blessed us with and entrusted to us for his kingdom work. We have several giving options for you to utilize. As St. Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, Arrange in advance for the gift you have promised, so that it may be ready as a willing gift, not as an extraction. The point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has made up his mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all contentment in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. For this week's Team Jesus announcements, our annual Community Workday will be held on Sunday, September 18th. All activities this year will take place right at the church. We will need at least 60 volunteers for our Sleep in Heavenly Peace bed framing project and more for our other indoor projects and our luncheon. Please consider volunteering your time and your talents on this date to help those in our community. You can contact the church office if you'd like to sign up. 
Also, registration for this year's women's retreat ends on September 4th. That means you only have a few weeks left to sign up. The women's retreat will be held on October 1st and 2nd. You can contact the church office or scan the QR code in the Team Jesus News to register online. Women of St. Stephen, we hope you walk, run, skip, or hop your beautiful feet to this year's retreat. Silver Saints will meet this coming Thursday, August 18th at 12 noon for our annual Ice Cream Social. All 55 plus members and friends are welcome to join. This month, bring your favorite dish to share. Homemade ice cream will be provided. Finally, Grief Share is a Christ-centered program that works through practical tips for dealing with the death of a loved one. Our next session begins on August 23rd. Classes are held Tuesday evenings from 6.30 to 8 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Classes are completely free to anyone. Registration is available now and open online. For more information or to find the links and QR codes, please check this week's issue of the Team Jesus News. We continue our trek through Luther's small catechism with the reading of the sacrament of holy baptism. What is baptism? Baptism is not just plain water, but it is the water included in God's command and combined with God's word, which is that word of God. Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. What benefit does baptism give? It works forgiveness of sins, rescues from death and the devil, and gives eternal salvation to all who believe this, as the words and promise of God declare. Which are these words and promises of God? Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Mark, Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. How can water do such great things? Certainly not just water, but the word of God in and with the water does these things, along with the faith which trusts this word of God in the water. For without God's word the water is plain water and no baptism. But with the word of God, it is a baptism, that is, a life-giving water rich in grace and a washing of the new birth in the Holy Spirit, as St. Paul says in Titus, chapter 3. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by His grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying. What does such baptizing with water indicate? It indicates that the old Adam in us should by daily contrition and repentance be drowned and die with all sins and evil desires and that a new man should daily emerge and arise to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. Where is this written? St. Paul writes in Romans chapter 6, We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life.
Our prayers for this Sunday include Anthony Size, who's uh, recovering from an illness. Also, prayers for Cody Razzo as he continues his healing from his surgery on his hand, and we pray that he gets full use of that back. Prayers for Andy Hoffman, who has a heart procedure coming up on the 17th. Prayers for Steve. This is uh, Margaret Evanson's niece's husband that has been hospitalized, and they're trying to figure out what's going on. And then also prayers for Evelyn. This is Brian Powell's mother that is in the hospital recovering from surgery and has more testing uh, ahead of her and potential cancer treatment uh, ahead of her. So prayers for them for sure. Also prayers for uh, Debbie and family. This is uh, Pam Witt's roommate that passed away. Pam is one of our shut-ins in a nursing care center. And so we pray for Pam. Um, as uh, she, as her roommate passed away a couple weeks ago. Also prayers for Leon. This is Steve Ullman's uncle that passed away at the age of 93. So let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, empower your church to be obedient to following the great commission of making disciples. Pour out your spirit upon us all so that we are better equipped to share the hope that we have with us. Open doors to our top 10 list so that we have opportunities to share our hope in Jesus. And we also ask your guidance and your, on our ministry clarity process so that team Jesus is united in purpose of bringing and growing people in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, guide the leaders of this world and especially our nation. Grant peace and justice to all people so that your gospel may be heard in all nations. Watch over over those who serve in our armed forces, law enforcement, and first responders. Send your angels to guard and care for them and bring them home safely to their families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, strengthen and heal all those who are ill, especially Anthony, Cody, Andy, Steve, Evelyn. Comfort those who are mourning the death of loved ones, including Debbie's family and the Steve Ullman family. Death is indeed a reminder to us all to be ready for our final call. Keep us always steadfast in our faith until our final call. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life, you called us to be your own through the power of baptism. Help us daily to remember that you have made us your children in baptism. So we celebrate with Eric, Evan, Madeline, Courtney, Carlin, Chelsea, Mason, Addie, and Carter as they celebrate their baptismal birthdays. Let us all delight in our baptismal promises of forgiveness, hope, new life, and everlasting life with you. Lead us to hear your word, to trust in it, and give witness to it in our daily lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, loving Father, who loves to shower gifts upon his children, we give you thanks and praise for this precious gift of marriage. We rejoice with Bill and Pam, Matt and Meg, Shane and Heather, and Al and Brenda as they celebrate another wedding anniversary. Continue to bless and strengthen them and all of our marriages. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue our catechism trek through the Lord's Prayer with the fourth petition. So what is the fourth petition? Give us this day our daily bread. What does this mean? God certainly gives daily bread to everyone without our prayers, even to all evil people. But we pray in this petition that God would lead us to realize this and to receive our daily bread with thanksgiving. What is meant by daily bread? Daily bread includes everything that has to do with the support and needs of the body, such as food, drink, clothing, shoes, house, home, land, animals, money, goods, a devout husband or wife, devout children, devout workers, devout and faithful rulers, good government, good weather, peace, health, self-control, good reputation, good friends, faithful neighbors, and the like. Now receive the benediction of our Lord, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.
Set us free.